who knows how brief Michael Carrick's tenure in charge at Manchester United will be, but he gets underway uh, in winning fashion. 2-0 victory away to Villarreal. And of course, it means now that Manchester United have qualified for the knockout stage of this season's UEFA Champions League. So, obviously, a very happy Michael Carrick, and we'll hope to hear from the Manchester United uh, interim manager, as it were. There's confirmation of how it stands in Group F at the moment. Young boys and Atalanta to play a little bit later. They kick off at 8 o'clock. But Manchester United through Villarreal, still in second place, but they can be overtaken by Atalanta if they get the victory away to uh, Young Boys later on, as I said. So a satisfying finish for Manchester United and uh, I suppose we've got to keep in mind that it was an improved performance in that second half but they also have to thank the goalkeeper for, for keeping the minute in the first half and particularly during the second half where he pulled off a remarkable save to keep it, at, to keep it scoreless. Yeah, it's a wonderful save he pulls off from Tugaris when he comes in on the right side volley and he gets down and pushes over but the introduction of Fernandez and um, Rashford made a huge difference. Just the energy was lifted, the passing going forward, breaking lines, everything about them, they came to life and it was a huge huge difference in the second half. You know, they started off in Loyal with decent enough, but as soon as I was introduction to those players, they just showed their quality. I suppose you have to do an initial assessment of Michael Carrick's performance in the dugout, and the mere fact that he made successful substitutions uh, is a good sign for him. Brave decisions beforehand, big decisions, leaving Fernandez out, and he deserved to be left out. He'd been poor, and he was really poor against Watford, and I know Ronnie spoke about how good he was when he came on. Mm. Great sign to see him come on and not sulk, not moan, Carrick bringing him on early enough so he could make a difference. When he came on, he was involved in everything good. But um, yeah, you know, positive. It was easy for Carrick to come in there and just not rock the boat and leave Fernandez in there and leave Rashford in there. No, made a big decision, and then it worked because they came on and made a difference when he did bring him on. And, of course, it wasn't the most confident of performances in the second half, but after the Ronaldo goal, they seemed to settle down a little bit and then there was only going to be one winner. But do you think, from a confidence point of view, that result would mean a lot to this United team? Well, it, it, they're true now at the next stage. So mm. that, that in itself is a huge thing. So for the team going forward, they're going to feel like, OK, we have another boy at the cherry. They're in a position now where they can continue on and push into those groups, into those um, knockout stages. And for this group of players, when new manager coming in, again, there's a lot on the table for them to play yeah, for. But yeah. I think that second half performance, the, the latter stages of it, they passed forward, they broke through the lines, they played with energy, and it, it was just much improved. And keeping in mind, too, that the players will be conscious whether the new manager, uh, permanent manager, comes before the end of the season or not, a lot of these players will be playing for their places at Manchester United over the coming weeks and months, won't they? Yeah, and it's attractive now. They're definitely, in the, as I said, gone through attractive for a new manager. Um, you know, playing for their places, I think, you know, you see the difference when, when Fernandes came on. But that was the kick up the backside that he needed. You know, he, he hadn't been playing well. He looked untouchable and, and Carrick made a big decision. Drop them, brings them on, he plays well. Um, you know, the big thing I'd worry about for Man United is why over the course of not just that game, but over the course of this season, last season, why they're so poor in the first half of games. Really disappointing again tonight in the first half. Couldn't, couldn't get out, you know, couldn't take the handbrake off or get out of first gear. In the second half, you know, credit our fitness man team or whatever behind the scenes, because they're always finished the games really strong, always look like the better team. They did on Saturday against Watford until they got the sending off. Maguire came out strong in the second half, should have scored goals. So, you know, whatever it is, whatever happens, whatever substitutions they make, they, they love a pitch to be opened up. Good players love space. They came alive when the pitches opened up, but when it's a bit more tactical, when it needs to be a bit more organised, that's when they struggle. So this is something for a new manager to, to get stuck into and work on, but definitely signs of hope. Yeah, so if you were at Manchester United now in a decision-making capacity, Stephen, would you want to get that interim manager in now? Would you go further with Carrick or would you really try and get the man who will eventually take the reins permanently in? before the end of the season. Ideally, if, if you can get hold of the manager you want to take over, which seems to be all, seems to be pointing towards something like Pochettino, you try and get him in now and you do everything you can. Like, Manche it's Manchester United, they're not the type of team that need to wait. They, they, yeah. they, if they see something, they, they should be able to, and be in a capacity to go get it done. So if they have someone they've earmarked that can take this team forward, and like Kevin was talking about there, you know, that, that, that start, it's the second half, they can finish so well, they can finish strong, they can have players that can influence the game. Why not start strong? And that's something a manager can come in and think, right, this is what we do well, this is what we don't do well, let's go and organise ourselves from the start of the game, be resilient, be started. Because they gave up a lot of chances and Villarreal yeah. could have gone at half-time in, in a comfortable lead in this game. So to come at the second half and be able to push themselves through like they did, that's what a manager can identify. And for me, get someone in now if you can. Yeah, but uh, listening to you guys uh, as that match went through, uh, I mean, you talked an awful lot about what was going on in that 
that Manchester United midfield and Fred and McTominay, they came up time and time again. So no matter what manager you have in there, I mean, the options at midfield still seem pretty limited. Is that where they need significant change? Well, to have a £100 million player who's injured and hasn't really performed over the last couple of years in Pogba... No, he's so not the answer. He's, it doesn't look like he's the answer, and you hope every time a new manager comes in that they'll be able to figure him out and, and be the answer and get him to play like he does for France. Um, but listen, if he's not the answer, McTominay and Fred, again tonight, take too many touches, too slow. For all the money Manchester United have spent, they've been really disappointed. But I give them credit where credit's due. Both of them in the second half stood up, stepped forward, got higher presses, won some tackles, looked to play forward. So, again, when the game opened up, they came alive. But when it was more tactical and you need to move the ball quicker and you need to be better with your pass, more precise, the two of those are a weak link. The, the difference for Pogba, you're talking about Pogba or France, is N'Golo Kante. That's the difference. You have a player of that quality playing beside him. Makes his job much easier because you know he's doing the equivalent to what almost two holding yeah. midfielders do. So that if United want to get the best of Pogba, they need to identify a player that can come in and do that job. Well, you'd have to say Manchester United were gifted the first goal, but if you're going to gift an opportunity to somebody, I suppose the best man to gift it to is Cristiano Ronaldo because he will take it. Yeah, fabulous finish. This is where we're talking about first half to press. Watch Fred here from highlight. In the first half, he was reactive. This time, he reacts first. Gets there, doesn't wait for the ball to be passed. Is on the run and then Ronaldo, you want it from him. But Fred does really well, wins it high up the pitch. And Ronaldo, you know, great awareness to know where yeah. the keeper is. It was only one finish, really. Buez poor on the ball there first time the night he got caught in it. But Ronaldo had only one finish in his head. First time without looking, knew the keeper where he was. That's why he has all those goals. That's why. We question whether Craig might, <laughs> might take I was him off. I was wondering, I was wondering I, where you got to say. I said leave him on, obviously. But, um, listen, that's why he was on the pitch. That's why he yeah. saved. This, as I said before, and he kept Solskjaer in the job so far this season. A number of important goals. I think in the Atlanta one kept him in the Champions League. And again tonight, really important finish. Um, and he worked hard tonight and he looked really up for it. And they all did, in fairness, in the second half. But yeah. He led from the front. I thought he was impressive. He wasn't on the ball a whole lot, but he, what he did what he had to do. He's 36 years of age and he was, you know, listen, trying to, trying to inspire and trying to do, trying to get them up the pitch. You see him trying to get him forward. You saw him in the second half trying to get lads forward. I see him hugging Fred in the celebration there, you know, basically for doing what he wanted to do. Get forward, win the ball up the pitch and it worked out for him. Yeah, you can rely on Ronaldo. Uh, what about uh, Jadon Sancho? Probably needed a Champions League goal to boost his confidence and w will help him get a run in the team. Yeah, it's somebody, he, he needs game time, he needs on it, but the difference in this was, it's when he gets in the position, this is the second goal, or this is another opportunity here, second goal, and it's Ronaldo starts her off, pass away, Fernandes does really well, just has a sight to see Sancho on his right hand side and just lets the touch off us. But McTominay, one of his only forward passes, he plays the whole game, and that's towards the end of the game, the confidence, so that's where it changes. But they get forward quickly, Rashford runs forward off the ball, and then Sancho does really well. It's touches these, still got a lot to do, kind of slices across it, but it's a fantastic finish in that top corner, and that's going to do his confidence no end. But in the game, as it went on, you see he was more involved. Um, Fernandez was looking to get in the ball and switch it really early to getting in one-on-one -on -one positions with a full-back allowing him to have time and space to run at people, and that's what he wants. He doesn't want to be yeah. getting crowded around. He wants to get, give him space, get the ball to him early, and let him go do his business, and he was effective in the second half. Yeah, what about the other United chances that came their way in the second half, Kevin? Yeah, they created the better of the chances in the second half. Um, this is the one, it's, I think it's Sancho cuts inside. Lovely little ball back to him from Fernandez, And he probably thinks he should score. Keeper does well there, but it's a great opportunity. Um, this is Wambasaka. Fernandez again involved. Wambasaka, you know, plays a nice, I suppose, teasing ball out. Ronaldo reads it. He's disappointed. It was a very difficult finish. He's disappointed with himself. He expects to score, but it was a really difficult finish. This is one I really like. Ronaldo plays a true ball. Rashford running in behind. There's a lot of people in the first half weren't running behind. Rashford came on. He did run in behind. And the amount of people getting into the box. Fernandez, Sancho and Ronaldo arriving late after playing the ball originally. Desire to get in the box and try to score the goals. Um, you know, it's easy for everyone to come short. A lot of the time in the first half, no one running behind. The second half, whatever happens at halftime, whatever they do in the second half, they show a lot more desire, a lot more confidence, a lot more... Um, you know, exciting, taking people on. The game opens up and it becomes easier for those players, I suppose. But they finish every game strong. They finish strong again tonight and looked like they could have got a couple more. Yeah, still possibly concerns at the back, though, Stephen, because they did give up a couple of chances and before David De Gea again. Yeah. Uh, they might have been in a bit of trouble. Yeah, he, he pulls off a fantastic save here. Villarreal break through the lines again, get through that press, pass, and just causing problems. And you know, they're so happy to drop off, and then it drops to Chigueras, and this bounces. It's a really awkward save, but he gets such a strong hand to it. Another situation, gets out wide, drive inside, diving in, opens up, and as it comes out here, Wambasaka actually does well to get across here and throw himself down because he just does enough to put him off. But um, 
they gave opportunities again and that was the first in the first half or the second half the first 15 20 minutes the changes came on and that changed the game but they still gifted opportunities and they're so guilty of when teams are running them they're willing just to drop off and drop off as a defender usually you're told to keep them out of box engage them before they get to the box because as soon as they come inside the penalty area you're in a much more difficult position more precarious you, can, you can't go near them you can't touch them so you try and engage them outside the box and stop them in those areas but they're so inclined to drop off and that's a disappointment and that's something they have to work on okay and briefly Kevin with Chelsea ahead at the weekend did they show enough tonight to suggest they'd be able to get anything out of that game <sighs> again I'm repeating myself first half no second half yes mm -hmm. um, Listen, they'll have a load of confidence after tonight. A real, you know, from such a low to winning this game tonight, guaranteeing into the next round. The confidence is massive in football. Anything that can get you going, anything can get you out of a lull. Um, so this wouldn't surprise me. And after the Chelsea game, they've got a great run of fixtures. You know, all very winnable. So they could go on a run. Football surprises every time. As I compare them to Chelsea last season, you never know what could happen. Yeah, you certainly don't.